Hello everyone. Welcome to my podcast Created with Farhana. Today I am going to talk on the topic onboarding. The focus of this podcast today is to understand why a proper onboarding is essential for any new hires into the workplace. We all should know that what ways can benefit an organization when it recruits its employees via a properly channelized employee onboarding process. So folks, what is onboarding? The methods of integrating new hires into the workplace is referred to as onboarding. It involves activities that help new employees to complete a new hire orientation process as well as learn about the company's structure, culture, vision, goals and values. According to statistics, a properly designed employee onboarding program may enhance employee retention by 25% and it is also the primary element that boosts employee performance by 11%. When an organization recruits its employees via a properly channelized employee onboarding process, the chances of their employees to stay with them for at least three years increases by 69%. Yes, 69%. That's a lot. We all know that the first 90 days for a new employee are often said to be the most important. This is when an employee settles into their new role and company and considers whether they made the correct choice. Companies need to take the time to craft an inclusive employee onboarding experience during this critical transition so that each new hire feels welcome, included, valued and respected. Today, I am going to go through some of the ways to craft an inclusive employee onboarding experience. Number one, share your DE and I goals and company values. When I say DE and I, it refers to diversity, equity, and inclusion. If your company has diversity, equity, and inclusion goals, make those clear from the start. Just as you would give new hires an overview of the state of your business and financial targets, outline how you are building a more inclusive and equitable workplace. Number two, ask preferred names and pronouns. While the legal name of an employee may be required for tax purposes, some employees may opt to use a different name for a variety of reasons. Inquire about new hires' preferred names and use them when introducing to others and setting up accounts. You can also respect and accept non-binary identities by asking employees what pronouns they prefer. Number three, introduce new hires to your team. Consider sending a new hire questionnaire to get new employees a bit better. Ask about things like where they grew up, where they would like to go for a vacation, if they speak any other languages, and what they do for fun. Send a welcome email to the entire staff with some entertaining facts so that current employees can bond with new hires through shared interests. Provide an organization chart and personal directory to new hires so they may learn more about their new co-workers and where they fit into the company. Number four, learn dietary preferences. Employees may have dietary restrictions due to religious or ethical beliefs, 
or for health or personal reasons as well. This may include food and beverage choices. Ask new hires to share their dietary preferences before their first day of work so you can plan accordingly. Number five, accommodate workspace setup and preferences. Encourage new employees to arrange their workspaces in such a way that it maximizes their productivity. This could include computer, desk, chair, and software preferences. For example, if I have to give my own scenario, when I'm at the office, I pray at a certain time during my lunch break. And I'm always grateful to have that kind of accommodation given to me. Number six, check in often. Checking up with new recruits on a weekly, bi-weekly or even monthly follow-up is a good idea. Have an open and honest discussion about how things are going. It's helpful to know what's working so you can have opportunities to improve and expand further. Moving on, the next thing what I want to discuss is there is also some risks when DE and I is not included in onboarding. And some of the things can be number one, lower employee morale. Any guesses, folks, what happens with low employee morale? Well, low employee morale can lead to missing deadlines, making more errors having poor work performance, and many more. The second thing what can happen is there can be lower levels of employee engagement. The employees will feel disengaged. After the initial hiring process, onboarding is one of the most critical parts of the employee experience. Employees who have a poor onboarding experience are several times more likely to be disengaged at work. Disengaged employees cost businesses money, approximately 18% of their salary, according to Gallup. They can also negatively impact workplace culture and co-workers' morale. The next thing that can happen is there can be increased employee turnover. Numerous studies have shown that the risk of employee turnover is highest early on in an employee's tenure and sometimes occurs within a person's first 45 days on the job. Without the right information and tools to set them up for success, newer employees are quick to leave for other opportunities. On the other hand, it also lowers productivity. Without sufficient onboarding, employees may have trouble understanding what is expected of them and what success looks like in their role, which definitely hinders their output. Poor onboarding can lead new hires to question why they joined the organization and how it will help them accomplish their career goals. Finally, folks, do you agree that there is certainly an art to develop a good onboarding process? It's all about aligning it in the proper way. At the end of the day, it's all about your employees. Your employees matter to you. Thank you and have a phenomenal day.